as a young adult in my 20s, I began to teach anchoring. And one of the very first questions I got is, why does NLP call it anchoring? And what is this whole anchoring thing? And some of you know about the whole story of Pavlov and Pavlov's dogs. And for those of you that don't, I'll keep this really simple. As a doctor of psychology, I got to study thoroughly behavioral psychology. And I also got to study the stimulus response, this idea of our unconscious response to external stimulus. And NLP took a look at this as well. The study that Pavlov did was with some dogs. And long story short, he was using a tuning fork and in some of the studies a light bulb. And what he would do is he would introduce a meat paste, which would evoke a meat paste. It's like a blended steak for the dog. And if you want to keep it really simple, dog has a taste of meat, begins to salivate, he would flash a light. Give the dog some of the steak, dog begins to salivate, he would flash a light. Within a short amount of time, he would be able to flash the light and the dog would begin to salivate without the steak being present. And he hypothesized that basically there is a thing called a stimulus response, that you can set up a stimulus that gets us to respond in a certain way. And you know, I'm, I'm in my 40s now, and I will be conducting a web, uh, webinar or seminar, a training, and I'll, I'll have a live audience in front of me. And I'll say the following phrase, and this is mainly for people in the US, maybe North America, who are my age or a little bit older. So if you're not from the United States, and I can appreciate, you got a bunch of students on here from Australia, welcome. This is an anchor that happens in the U.S. I'll look out the audience in the U.S. and I will say, Winston tastes good like a, and I'll pause, and the group will yell out, cigarette should. A little slogan that went along with it, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Now, I'm not condoning smoking. What I'm saying is that that marketing company that Winston Cigarettes hired did a fabulous job in anchoring you. So anchoring is a stimulus response. It's that you get linked to something that causes you to act a certain way. So the first question is why is anchoring so important? Anchoring is so important because it teaches you how you get neurologically linked to these things and it also gives you the opportunity to become more flexible with you. Anchors can be positive or negative. Uh, positive anchors, in my humble opinion, would be stimulus that evoke a positive response. So if every time you take a look at one of your kids, you just get this gigantic grin and smile on your face, that would be an example of a positive anchor. Um, I'm going to give you guys some other examples in just a moment. But a negative anchor would be where you walk into a certain situation and maybe someone looks at you a certain way or says something a certain way. And it's just the way that they say it causes you to feel a certain way. That would be an example of a negative anchor. So what I really want to share with you guys are what an anchor is, how anchors are established, get you guys comfortable with that, and then provide you with some resources to set up some positive anchors for yourself now and in the future. So hopefully the audio is going good. I haven't heard anything else from Chelsea, so I'm going to continue on. You can be anchored in all of the major modalities. Now, why would you want to anchor? Take back control of your emotional mental state, like I just said. Program yourself to feel exactly the way you want. Confident, sexy, powerful, happy, peaceful, focused, motivated. Know how to create powerful emotional responses in other people. And learn the secrets that advertisers use to program you and take back some of that control of your mental and emotional responses. I've been brought into major corporations. You know, we've done consulting work uh, as our company for Procter & Gamble, uh, biodiesel plant out on the East Coast, uh, LA Sheriff's Department, and you know, with individuals that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, top performing athletes, or whether it's with groups that are peak performers, they always want to have a greater level of control over their emotional state. In fact, the athletes that I've gotten to work with, what they do to prepare for a tournament, what they do to prepare for a moment. We got to work with an Olympic downhill skier. She basically was anchoring herself into a positive state to achieve what she wanted to achieve. 
Now, we can be anchored, like I said, visually, auditory, kinesthetically, olfactory, gustatory. That's a fancy way of saying you can see things that anchor you, hear things, feel things, smell things, and taste things. So anchors occur in all of these different modalities. Advertisers use visual anchors in um, ads, in magazines, in commercials. And in the commercial, they will be doing something that brings up an emotional response, maybe during the holiday season, showing you imagery that evokes a certain response. And then at the right time, based on having tested it with audiences, they'll then flash their logo, and it will begin to anchor a feeling to that logo. In fact, if I had you in a brain scan, they've done studies in cognitive psychology, if I had you in a brain scan, those studies show that the areas in your brain that recognize these logos light up before you can verbalize it. You are literally anchored at the neurological level. So most people know what that is. And as soon as I put it up there, if you like McDonald's, maybe you're beginning to salivate like the dog. <laughs> if you don't like McDonald's, maybe that's a negative anchor. We have these other visual things. That's a gasoline station here in the US. What about this? Target, oh, what does that evoke? If I had a Walmart logo up here, how would you feel about that? Is it different than the Target? NBC. And you will sometimes hear people in the audience sing the NBC jingle. And no, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm a trainer, not a singer. Nike. And what does Nike tell you to do? Oh, I wish I could have heard you guys. I bet you a few of you are shouting out, just do it. Nike, they've anchored us so well. Just do it. Oh, and here's a beautiful logo, Apple. Whatever you think of Apple computers, nice logo. And what about this movie that just came out recently? And how do you feel about that? These visual anchors occur in our surrounding. Auditory anchors. I'm going to go through this a little bit faster now. Auditory anchors could be jingles, catchphrases, taglines, songs. Oh, cell phone rings. OK, here's the best way to know that you're anchored. Because sometimes I have people in the audience and they go, you know, Dr. Matt, this is really neat, but there's no way I'm anchored. OK, here's a classic example that even I am anchored to. How many of you have ever been walking through an airport? You just arrived, and all of a sudden, you hear the sound of a text message. But you know that text message came from all the way on the other side of the walkway. You know that text message came from someone else. But you hear it, and you reach into your pocket. I was at the airport. I hear the text message go off, and I'm reaching into my pocket, literally saying to myself, that wasn't my phone, but I'm going to check it anyway. And I pulled the phone out, took a look at it, and went, yup, guess what? It wasn't my phone. Well, of course it wasn't my phone. It was someone else's phone. But here's the deal. That's an anchor. If you've ever changed your ringtone, and other people are all of a sudden telling you your phone's ringing and you don't hear it, you haven't anchored yourself yet. Auditory anchors, middle names. What if your mom calls you by your middle name, your full name, says your full name in that tone? Even to this day, when I think of that, I can feel the response build up inside me. We have kinesthetic anchors touch that we experience all the way from being a baby. This is why some people just absolutely enjoy getting that neck rub because we were held like that as babies. Uh, jumping into your car. Have you ever jumped into your car and someone's moved your seat and you weren't prepared for that? That can put you into a negative state right there. Handshakes. You know, when I teach people in business and sales about handshakes, one of the big things that I talk about is matching and mirroring how another person shakes your hand. That's a rapport builder. You know, some people like a firm grip, some people don't. And that's an immediate evoke, evoking or an invoking of a response when someone shakes your hand in a way that you don't like. What about some other ones? Oh, athletes, I already talked about that. Athletes are basically doing a series of anchors. What about smells, the smell of cookies, the smell of perfume? Oh, there is a perfume that my wife wears. And you know, I've, I've known her for about 20 years now. We were friends for quite a few years. We celebrated our 11th anniversary last year, being married. The smell of her perfume to this day, I just love it. And our daughter's turning seven this year. And one day, she was five, and she walked out into the hallway, and she said, uh, Daddy, come give me a hug. Oh, and I'm melting already. 
and I'm giving her this big hug, and I take a deep breath in, and I pull back, and I went, Skylar, and she's got this big smile. She goes, don't I smell good? I smell like mommy now. But here's the deal. That olfactory anchor, that smell, I have it associated with certain emotions that are appropriate for my wife, but I don't want to have that associated with my daughter. So I had to spend some time gently explaining to her, let's find you your own perfume, your own smell, and daddy will love it just as much. Because I want that anchor to stay pretty much on one thing and one person. Uh, the smell of a new car. That evokes a response. This is why car dealerships get it in liquid form. Uh, if you've ever been to Disneyland, they pump the smell of fresh baked cookies into the street or candy or chocolate or whatever it is that they do to get you into a positive mood. Or what about the smell of a Christmas tree? You know, that's a fake Christmas tree. It looks kind of like the one that I have in my house. My mom came to visit one day. She walked in the door and she said, oh, it's so beautiful. You have your tree up. And then she took a deep breath and said, that's a fake tree. And it was like she couldn't get into the Christmas mood. It was so cute. And then last but not least, you have taste. Many people will experience the increase of energy from the caffeine before it's even possible for the caffeine to circulate through the blood system and take effect. In other words, what's causing you to feel that way? That's right, an anchor. So here's the deal. You're being anchored all the time. In the U.S., is, I think these stats come from North America, but I'm pretty sure that they're close in Europe and Australia. 15,000 hours of television, well, actually, probably Americans watch about that much. Maybe in other countries it's less. <laughs> By the age of 12, 20,000 second, uh, 20, 30 second commercials, 2 million seen by 65, 247 commercial messages each day, 90,000. The question isn't whether or not you're being anchored, it's by whom. And so programming yourself, taking back that level of control, just the knowledge of anchoring gives you a greater deal of control over this. So let's jump right in. There's two things that you have to know in order to fully appreciate an anchor. The first one is a trigger. Trigger, something triggers you. And the second thing you have to know is response. And if you were a live audience, I would have you say it out loud. Trigger, response. Trigger, response. A trigger gets you to respond a certain way. The trigger can be visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory. When I was walking through that airport and I heard the cell phone go off all the way on the other side and I still reached for mine, the sound of the cell phone was the trigger and my response was, was reaching for my phone. That's trigger and response. In NLP, the trigger is called an anchor and the response is called a state. So the first thing you have to learn about anchoring is we need to talk about states. This comes from psychology, and a lot of people in anchoring talk about this. Uh, my PhD is in health psychology, and one of the things that's so important in overall health and fitness is being in a positive state, even when you're going through negative things. And in cognitive psychology, there's a lot of research that talks about how do you get into better control of your state, a lot of it has to do with repetition, habit, and practice. In other words, doing a series of anchors to learn how to better control your state all the time. State. So what is state? State is an emotion. If you see here on the screen, it has intensity over time. Intensity is how intense the state is. Over time is simply when you begin to feel something, it builds up in intensity, and then that intensity comes back down. Kind of looks like this. The state builds up, and the state comes back down. Now, of course, there's different levels of intensity for each state. So, for example, that curve might be lower with some states and higher with others. Now, here's the deal. At the point where the state begins to come up, if you apply a stimulus, or what we call an NLP, an anchor, and then let go or remove the anchor, which is the trigger, at the point where the person just comes off peak, that moment right there, that emotion, becomes the anchor. So in other words, here's an example. This is how most people in NLP do it. 
if a person as they go into state begins to feel the emotions coming up and I see the person's state changing, I put my finger down on the knuckle and as I touch their knuckle and they begin to go more into state, when I see them come off state, I let go of their knuckle. I've now established the touching of the knuckle as the trigger for whatever state they went into. The next time I go to touch their knuckle, they will, to a certain extent, feel that state. There's a way to improve your effectiveness with this, obviously, and I'm going to share that with you. That connection right there, that connection between the touch of the knuckle and entering into the state is what we call an anchor. And in the, uh, in the email that we send out to you guys as the follow-up after this, and we're going to provide you with a free gift to help you with your resources, one of the things that I'd also love to provide is a video of me doing a simple anchor with a gentleman that I invited up during one of our practitioner trainings so that you can see this. Streaming it right now, that's going to be a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to have to continue to explain this. Now, you need to know four things to understand an anchor. First of all, you need to understand how to get the person to recall the anchor, how to anchor it, then how to change the state, and then how to evoke it. We're going to cover those. How long the anchor is is roughly 5 to 15 seconds. There's no way for me to tell you it's going to be 5, 15. It's different with every person. The mnemonic device that we use to remember how to do an anchor is RACE. Recall, anchor, change, evoke. Recall a past tense emotion. So you would say to the person a certain script, and I'm going to share that script with you, and that would get the person into the state. Then, by touching their knuckle, by snapping your finger, by showing a light at the precise moment, that will anchor the emotion to that stimulus, so the touching of the knuckle. Changing state is simple. Just get them to think of something else. And then evoke is you then go touch the knuckle again, fire that trigger off, or fire the anchor. Firing the anchor means you are activating the stimulus and watching them go into that state. You can anchor yourself and you can anchor other people. We will be providing you with some resources so you can go through an anchoring for yourself. I'll describe what it is as we begin to wrap up. But I do want to make sure that you guys have a deeper understanding of this. So let's continue a little bit. Remember the mnemonic device race, recall, anchor, change, evoke. That will help you remember the basics or the basis of doing a simple anchor. So there are three types of states you can anchor. They are naturally occurring states, past vivid highly associated states, and constructed states. When I, when I wasn't training as much, when I was in my 20s, I volunteered at a school and I coached volleyball. I used to play volleyball. Uh, I, I was setting, uh, back row passing and whatnot. I'm not the tallest person on the team, but it was club. It wasn't professional or anything. But I got fairly good at it, and one of the people that I played with, uh, he was a head coach for a boys team at one of the local intermediate high schools, and he asked if I would come be a, an assistant coach. And one of the things, because he knew what I taught, he knew about a little bit about NLP, and he had recently read one of Phil Jackson's books. Phil Jackson, the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, one of the winningest coaches of all times, has often been referred to as being weird. He'd bring people in to do guided visualization, and sometimes the uh, players would laugh. He would have people come in and do things like anchoring and peripheral vision and guided imagery, and you name it. He did weird things. And I, I got to do a presentation for a bunch of people in business. Uh, this is a few years back now. And when I came in, a few people raised their hand and said, you know, what you teach is kind of weird. And I said, you know, that's, that's funny. I've heard this before. And then I, I explained about Phil Jackson. And I said, have you heard this guy who raised his hand and said, you know, NLP is kind of weird. What you do is weird. I said, well, here's the thing that I want to ask you. Weird. What does weird mean? It means it's not the norm. It's not the normal thing that you're used to. I said, well, if I am going to have to pick which side I want to be on, the weird side, or the normal side. See, normal hasn't been getting us the type of results that we want, has it? 
And he goes, no, it hasn't. I said, so you don't want me to come in here and just do another business training like you've already heard. You obviously would want something that's a little bit different. So I don't care if you call it weird. When we get the results, it's going to be amazing. Because they call Phil Jackson weird. But that weird guy won a lot of games and championships. So when I was brought in to do this coaching, the guy, the guy who brought me in, he had just read the Phil Jackson book. And he's like, I want some of your weird. And I was like, OK, I'll bring it. And one of the first things I taught the kids to do, that every time they hit the ball really well, or pass the ball really well, or the setter I was working with, every time he would set the ball really well, I would tell them to gently touch their right ear and pull it a little bit. You know, athletes, they do fist pumps when they do really well. And then when they're not doing well, they start doing the fist pumps unconsciously to get them back into the state. Well, when I've worked with athletes, I've said the fist pump is not as accurate. You can do a fist pump in a different way. If you touch your ear, it makes it a lot more precise. If you just gently touch your ear, and these kids would do it during practice, during the games, and the head coach, his name was John, he had to go somewhere on a, on a trip for, I think he also played music, and so he, he left the island, and I was coaching a game that we weren't supposed to win. We were playing a better team, but you know what? We won the first set. Second set, we lost. Third set, we were ahead. And all of a sudden, the kids started getting a little bit nervous. And we got behind by a point, so I called the timeout. I huddled them up. And I'm looking at the kids. And I said, OK, I'm going to drop the play. And here's what we're going to do. And one of the kids, the one that I had been working with in setting, he looked at me and he said, Coach Matt. And I went, yes. He said, aren't we going to touch our ear and do that thing to make us feel better? And I smiled. And I went, man, even I forgot that weird comes first. Uh, and I went, yeah, absolutely. And we all reached up, touched our ears, and everyone took a deep breath in. And they got into such a powerful state that they started remembering the positive times and how they've come back from behind. And they went out there and won the game. They won the third set. They won the, the entire match. And it was absolutely amazing to see that. That's a naturally occurring state. They were anchoring themselves in that state. Well. The problem is to get a naturally occurring state, you have to have the person go into that state. You don't just tell them, start laughing. You know, if you're good at telling jokes and you tell a joke, uh, that's a lot of what comedians do. They tell jokes, they make a certain facial expression or wave their hands in a certain way, and it anchors that. In NLP, the second one is the one we focus in on the most, past, vivid, highly associated states. The reason why we focus in on that one is because your clients aren't going to get into a naturally occurring state right in front of you. And constructed states, because they're pretend, are almost completely ineffective. So we use past vivid, highly associated states. And the way you get someone to remember a highly vivid associated state is you say to them, can you remember a time when you felt totally, and then you say a state? Can you remember a time where you felt totally happy? Can you remember a specific time? As you go back to that time now, float down into your body, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt, the feeling of being totally happy. Now, you've got to watch the client as they begin to get into that state. That's when you would touch their knuckle. And as you begin to see them come off that state a little bit, then you would let go. That touching of the knuckle now becomes an anchor. We'll come back to this in a moment. So you've got to remember the four steps to anchor are recall, anchor, change, evoke. So you would read that script. You would say to them that script to keep it really easy, focused. Can you remember a time when you were totally motivated, a specific time? Go back to that time now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt, that feeling of being totally motivated. As they go into state, you touch their knuckle. When they reach the peak of state, that is, it's like you see it build up, and then they kind of begin to come back down a little bit. You let go. And you change their state. Ask them what is the score of the, uh, you know, the rugby match last night. What's the score of the football match? You know, and they're thinking of something else. Then you touch the knuckle. That's evoke. And that puts them back into the state. Now, there are five keys to anchoring. There are five keys to anchoring. And those five keys are intensity, timing, uniqueness, replication, and number of times. And really, this is where you, as the practitioner, kick it up a notch. So I was brought out to a company 
to do some business consulting, help them message what they had to offer in a much better way. And I did an entire presentation for them on the utilization of anchoring in advertising and in marketing. My wife was in the training at that time, and it was really cute. Uh, she's here in the room with me right now, so she'll probably start to look over at me uh, in just a moment. But um, you know, I, I teach anchoring so often. I teach it more from a therapeutic context, or I teach it from a uh, you know personal growth context. And she had never gotten to really hear me do a business-specific presentation on anchoring. And I got done with the anchoring presentation, and she, and she came up to me on the break, and she said, "Man, that was good. I've never heard anything that detailed about business." And I said, yeah, you use anchoring and advertising all the time. Uh, testimonials. Testimonials bring up intensity. Timing. Timing is how much intensity do you put into that testimony, and then you don't give too much, and then you tell them something very serious about the empowerment partnership or your product or your service. You make your logo unique so that you, that uniqueness, when you see it, you immediately recognize it. Replication, you have to be able to replicate that logo or that anchor that you have established. And then number of times in business would be how many times you do that with your clients, with your students. You know, When you look at it from a written perspective, it is a little bit more tough because you've got to write an ad that evokes a response, catches their eye. You have to make a compact telling offer that builds up the intensity you have to have some good research on how much verbiage do you put in there because after a certain amount of time they lose their peak of state but if you put just enough in there that it's built up the intensity and then you make a unique offer and make sure that your logo is there present they're able to see it and you're able to replicate that that puts the client into a very positive state when they call up your office. And so this is used in advertising. I've taught it to people, I've taught it to companies. Uh, ads on television, much easier. I mean, most people who spend a lot of money on ads on television, they do a lot of testing with it. They put it in front of a focus group. They watch them. Heck, some of the people that I know, they have you hooked up to galvanic skin response to see your heart rate and your blood pressure. And is the state intense enough? Have they timed the logo of the company just right. Let's break these down and how you use it for you. Plain and simple, an intense state is going to provide you with a better anchor. So when you start doing this with yourself, make sure your states are intense. Don't pick states that are weak or blah. That's going to get you a blah result. Timing. Practice your timing. The timing of the anchor is critical. The moment you feel a state building up, if you're practicing this with yourself, the moment that you feel a state building up, you touch your knuckle. The moment you begin to feel it coming down a little bit, you let go. Uniqueness. I like the knuckles. I, that's early in NLP. They started using the knuckles because the knuckles are very unique. Drawing a dot on your arm and anchoring that, eventually you lose track of it. And the knuckles are easy to replicate. Replicate means that you can touch the same place again or show the same logo again. Now, replication. This is why companies that have an established brand yeah, in, in marketing and advertising, anchoring is called branding, that once you have an established brand, that's difficult to change. Um, ten years ago, the name of our company was Advanced Neurodynamics. It took three years to do a series of branding to transition from that name to the Empowerment Partnership, which is a name that I think is more fitting for what we do. Number of times. That's the more you anchor yourself, the more it builds up that state. So you got to remember race and I turn. Race is recall, anchor, change, evoke. That's basically how you do an anchor. And I turn is intensity, timing, uniqueness, replication, number of times. These are the five keys to anchor. So let's talk about, in just a moment, stacking anchors. I want to, again, help you understand that this picture of the hand up there, that knuckle, if I just did one state and touched that knuckle one time, that's a simple anchor. What's going to be very powerful for you guys isn't just to put one state in there, but to be able to set up a very powerful resource anchor for yourself. In NLP, we have a thing called resource anchors. A resource anchor 
is multiple states anchored individually to the same location. I've gotten to work with a ton of people who've gone out and then become trainers. In fact, in a week, we're running our trainers training here. And I think it's our 28th annual trainers training. Those are 28 years now. We have taught people to go out there and become trainers of NLP. I mean, we have trained some of the big names in the business. Uh, companies down in Australia, in Europe, Japan. They're graduates from our program, and they're doing amazing. And, and here's the deal. When you get up in front of a group, you better be in a positive state. And the way you get into a positive state is to control your state. And the easiest way to do that with NLP is through stacking anchors. So you can anchor multiple positive states to the same location so that you are able to use that as a resource. Why would you want this? Well, if you do any presentations, if you do any communication, any selling, any uh, dialogue with an individual where you want to be in certain emotional states going into that, that would be a good thing. Or if you play a sport, even from a recreational standpoint, I got to work with a golfer who was wanting to go from amateur to pro, and he had a zero handicap. This guy was amazing, and the bulk of the work I did was teaching him how to maintain a good state when he hit a bad shot, because the thing that threw him off was he'd hit the ball, it wasn't exactly the way he wanted, and he would begin to feel a negative state. So I helped him build up a powerful resource anchor that he would then be able to use instead. So those are the reasons why you would want to have a resourceful anchor, because it gives you an opportunity to be in a positive, amazing state in any situation. So it looks like this. If that's your hand, let's say we wanted to pick some states, maybe happiness, power, confidence, and laughter. I love laughter in there. If you're dealing with certain issues that you want to release, yeah, you would anchor happiness to the knuckle. You would then anchor power to the same knuckle. You would then anchor confidence to the same knuckle. Then you would anchor laughter. Now, these are example states, folks. These are example states. Please remember, you pick the states that are appropriate for you. I don't think I anchored laughter to my positive state of getting up in front of a group, because every time I get up in front of the group, I don't want to start laughing at them. Uh, I'd much rather be laughing with them. So I think I put things in there like confidence, uh, totally going for it, feeling empowered. Uh, motivation, I, I got motivation in there. So I, I picked states that were appropriate for that context. If you're using your resource anchor to overcome negativity, I love laughter. Make sure you get laughter in there if you want to overcome the negativity with that. So that's basically a stacked anchor or a stacking anchor. You are over and over again putting a positive state on a specific location. Now, the MP3 that you guys are going to get, you know, I always love to give back. In NLP terms, it's called Ring of Power. And you guys are going to get a recording where I'm going to guide you through the process of establishing a powerful resource anchor. Yeah, for those of you that like Lord of the Rings, uh, that's, the, that's the Lord of the Rings ring there. A student uh, gave that to me and said, you should put that up there. I guess the movie has a positive anchor for that student. But you're going to be given what's called a Ring of Power. Let me explain what it is so that you guys are all prepped for it. Uh, when I first started doing NLP, Tony Robbins, Richard Bandler, they would do a resource anchor that was called, some, I don't remember which one called it Ring of Power. One of them called it Ring of Power. One of them called it Circle of Excellence, or maybe it was Circle of Power or Ring of Excellence. I don't know. I, who cares what the label is? The idea is that if you have an imaginary ring on the ground, that when you think of a positive state and you step into it, you anchor that positive state to that imaginary ring. Well, what that does is it allows you to then imagine that ring anywhere, and you can just step right into it and feel that. We do this with groups all the time. And I did a studio recording of this. And I'm going to give that back to you guys. I want you guys to have the availability to do that and to truly experience. We're also going to send you uh, a copy of a video of me doing an anchor so you can see the timing, so that you'll be able to see that and get an experience of it. This is going to begin to wrap up the uh, presentation. So, you know, let's let me go over a quick summary. Let me give you the tips, and then I'm going to remind you of our websites real quick. Talk about how you got the MP3, and then I'm going to open it up to questions. So here we go.
begin to notice your anchors and how you react to them. Begin to notice the negative and positive anchors that trigger you. Uh, remember that when someone talks to you a certain way, yeah, that, that how they talk to you may not be the most appropriate thing, but you should have control over your emotional state. If someone talks to me in a way that's less than positive, I have the resources to overcome a negative reaction to that. So begin to notice your anchors, the positive and negative ones. Make sure when you get that email and you got the MP3 that you listen to it and establish a powerful resource anchor to improve your state from moment to moment. And then the best thing you can do is practice, practice, practice. I, you know, I'm pretty lucky. I've been doing this for 31 years. Uh, I've been doing this from a very early age. And when you see the video, it's going to look real effortless what I did. But that's because I've been practicing for a long time. And so the way you get good at this is practice and build up a positive experience of doing it. Different people go into states in different ways. So see if you can practice with different people. Some people go into state easily. Some people, you've got to gently push them into state. And that's just you getting more flexible with what you do. So let me quickly go through this. You already have our websites. Make sure you stay in contact with us. You got our Facebook connection. I hope a few of you uh, link up with me on Facebook. I'll look forward to seeing you there. And uh, the downloadable MP3. We usually send an email out with the downloadable uh, MP3, but we also give you the link here. We're going to send you the email. We're going to send you the email tomorrow, uh, and the link is going to expire in about a week. So you're going to have a week to download this. You're also going to get the link to our video. I believe we have it up on YouTube, so we'll give you that link as well. Uh, that YouTube link will obviously stay up there for a while, but this gift for you, the downloadable MP3, that's going to be sent by email, and, and that's for you guys. Those of you who are listening to this on a recording, if you're listening to it within a short proximity of, what is this, middle of July, then yep, the link is still available for you. But if it's not, email our office and see if we've got another upcoming webinar that we'll be able to help you out with. And last but not least, I would love to see you guys in an upcoming NLP training. Look, we do a scholarship program and we let people that come in at our practitioner training for $97. And the feedback that we get is phenomenal. We're running our master practitioner right here in Newport Beach. We're halfway through uh, the second half, the breakthrough session. I've gotten to teach medical doctors, licensed professionals, athletes, and I've also gotten to teach people that just want to do this for themselves to improve their life. And so if we're coming to a place near you, I highly recommend that you take the opportunity to attend one of our trainings. We're going to be in San Jose and San Diego in August. And in October, for the first time, we're going to be in, Port, uh, in Boston. We're actually going to be in Boston, Massachusetts in October. And Nicholas we're going to, is going to be teaching some of the seminars that month because I'm going to be going down to Australia. We're already booking our hotels right now. And so Nicholas is going to be teaching in the US, in Boston, Phoenix, and Portland. And I'm going to be going down to Sydney and Melbourne. So I'm going to be going down there to Australia. Love going to Australia. Miss it so much. And so we're aiming for October. So make sure you stay connected with us and get those email blasts and look at it. And if you, I'm coming to a town near you or if we're sending a trainer out there, go take advantage of it and absolutely enjoy the experience. So I got a little bit of time saved for questions. Let me open up the uh, questions here. Hopefully you guys can still see me. I'll try to put the web uh, cam back on, see if you guys are able to see me that way. Aloha. Sorry the video didn't work out. Chelsea, let me know if it starts to cut out again. Hopefully it doesn't cut out too much, but we'll give it a try. So let me look over here, open up the questions tab. Robert, this is your first webinar. Uh, Dr. Matt, it was excellent, great refresher. Thank you very much. Glad that you're here, Robert. I appreciate that. And yeah, you know what? I've been teaching this stuff uh, since the 90s. I've been studying it for 31 years and I, I, I don't get bored of this. I love this stuff. And the more you hear it, the better you get. And hopefully I gave you some new tips because I don't usually talk about advertising. So hopefully you get a little bit out of it. A few of you said you were having problems with the sound and uh, a few of you said leave the video on. You guys can see me clearly. Sorry about that. Video's back on. I just wanted to make sure you guys got the content. For those of you that were having trouble with the audio, we did re we're going to send you the link for that so that you'll be able to go back and listen to it. We've got a ton of people here, so I know a few people weren't able to make it. We'll make sure that we get them uh, the video as well. 
let me see. Sorry, I can't see the video. That's all right. I turned the video off. Let me see if there's any uh, email. Let me see if there's any NLP anchoring specific questions. Thank you. It was great. You're welcome, Alfonso. I appreciate you being here. Oh, here we go. I got a question from Tom. And Tom said, are you able to anchor yourself and other people? The answer is yes, absolutely. And when you anchor yourself, what you're basically doing is you're giving yourself the script. I don't know if you guys want to follow along or not, but it would basically go like this. You'd have your knuckle out, and you'd have your finger, and you get your finger right over the knuckle. Hopefully you guys can see this. And you would say to yourself, think of a time when you were totally motivated. Now, you got to... Here's the deal. You can't just say the script. You actually have to begin to feel it. So the way you would anchor yourself is the same way you would anchor someone else. You would say, let me think of a time totally motivated. OK, a specific time. Go back to that time now. I already feel the motivation building up, so I'm going to touch my knuckle. Go back to that time. I'm going to see what I saw, hear what I heard, feel what I felt, that feeling of being totally motivated. can feel that building up right now. And now I can begin to feel it come down a little bit, so I'm going to let go. Now essentially what I've just done is I've thought of that motivation, the anchor built up, the state built up, I touched my knuckle at the moment I felt it. And as soon as I began to feel it come down a little bit, I let go of the knuckle. Now what I have right now is an anchor of motivation on that knuckle. If I was going to put another positive state like excitement, I would do that same thing saying excitement, but I would touch my knuckle at the point where the excitement builds up. Hope that makes sense. Now what I can do is I can touch the knuckle. See, I felt that building up a little bit. I don't know how the lighting is in here, but I got a mirror right behind here, and I got a rosy glow to my cheeks right now. No matter how long you do NLP, this stuff works. Yeah, it absolutely works. So I can feel that motivation. I'm going to put more positive states on there for uh, my class that I'm teaching tomorrow, teaching about the mind-body connection tomorrow and how to help people with the health and healing paradigm. So I want to get some motivation for that. So Tom, I hope that uh, answers the question. I hope that helps you out. And we're getting close to 8 o'clock, so let me see if there's any more questions. Okay, Martin, this is a great question. How do you respond to someone who talks about NLP with regards to manipulation? Uh, this is a really big question that we get all the time. And I, I think I've written a blog on this. It would really be helpful if you'd go check in and, and read a blog. So I'm a doctor of psychology. And let's handle something real fast. A specific tool or technique is not manipulation. So for example, psychology. Uh, psychology is about improving communication. Psychology is about improving your ability to communicate with someone else and help them out with their results. So a person who utilizes communication to do something to someone like trying to manipulate them, then that person is manipulative. Now, I'm going to agree that there are people out there who are manipulative. So what is the difference between being manipulative and being influential? Listen carefully. I want to be a positive influence on my children. A positive influence, when turned negative, is manipulation. NLP is a set of tools and techniques modeled from people like Virginia Satir, who helped people overcome baggage in their relationships and help them to improve their lives, from people like Dr. Milton Erickson, who help people overcome addictions and affliction. These are licensed professionals. Uh, I'm a doctor of psychology, and I'm very clear on this. And the answer to this is very simple, Martin. I, I hope you're still on here and paying attention to this. People who say NLP is, a man, is tools for manipulation, they probably had a negative experience of it with someone who was attempting to do things that are negative. And yep, there are people that do that. There are medical doctors who do negative things. There are lawyers who do negative things. There's politicians who do negative things here in the US and everywhere. And there are people who do positive things. So I believe in positively influencing people. And utilizing NLP techniques for positive influence, I think, is a good thing. And so when I teach this to people, and they raise their hand and they say, what about this whole manipulation thing? I go, well, it's a good thing that you're here, because then you can learn how to become a positive influence on others and avoid people who are manipulative. And that's why I teach NLP. And 
That's the way I teach it. And people are entitled to their opinion. And so I don't, I don't really fight back on this one. I just got a clear understanding of it and have the a academic educational background to speak pretty clearly about this. I hope that helps. And by the way, Martin, thank you for you know, posing that big question there. I, I, lo I love those kind of big questions, and I, I hope that answered it to your satisfaction. And if not, I'll do my best to uh, write a, a blog on it, because this is a huge topic. It is. Oh, Martin, you responded. You were there in Philadelphia about a year ago. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome, Martin. And again, thank you for asking the question. I love the big questions. I love to tackle those. And uh, so that's it. It's just about 8 o'clock. I like to usually keep this about an hour. So thank you all very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry the video was a little bit touch and go. I wanted to make sure I got a webinar in during July while I'm on the road. So hopefully the next time I do from home, I've got better internet there in Kona. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Aloha. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Mahalo.